Thank you for joining us for our reflection from a lesson in the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Monday, in the 11th week after Pentecost. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the ninth chapter, beginning at the second half of the 19th verse. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so that they might kill him, but his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly, in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Here ends the lesson. Paul was feared by the disciples for his persecution of the Christians prior to his Damascus Road experience. For a period of time after his dramatic conversion, he was still seen with great suspicion and distrust by the Christian community. How could someone who was filled with so much anger, hate, and violence suddenly become a man of profound peace? How could a person who was so unsafe become someone who was safe to the very people he persecuted with such a vengeance? At St. George's, we regularly offer the Boundaries class by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. The Ten Laws of Boundaries are rooted in Scripture. The first law of boundaries is sowing and reaping. The law of cause and effect is the basic law of life. When I choose a certain behavior, I also choose the consequences that go along with that choice. Paul surely must have understood the disciples' hesitancy to believe that his conversion was authentic. It is only human to doubt someone's sincerity when who they say they are is drastically different than the person you have known them to be. Rebuilding trust is difficult and slow work. When there has been a violation of any kind in a relationship, people may forgive, and hopefully they do, but they are usually cautious, which is only natural. While the disciples didn't initially embrace Paul, eventually he became an accepted leader to the other apostles and in the church. Paul is the most prolific New Testament contributor, and his work as an apostle is certainly noteworthy. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all strained relationships ended so positively? 
The last sentence of today's lesson reads, Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it, meaning the church, increased in numbers. This doesn't mean that the members of the church were afraid of God. This is a reference to verses in Proverbs, Psalms, and Sirach, which state that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What these verses are saying is that in this sense, fear is a sense of awe and honoring of the Lord. We pray for God to lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil, which seems to be exactly what happened for Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who celebrate with awe the Paschal Feast may be found worthy to attain to everlasting joys through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 a.m. on Sunday. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.